All right, everyone. So this is a breast implant that had been in a patient for over 20 years and had developed massive capsular contracture. She had capsular contracture within the first year and just never really had it taken care of until we recently just removed it. But you can see this is a textured implant. You can see these little bumps on this implant. We don't use these anymore, these textured implants. And then the capsule around it was just super hard and calcified. I mean, this right here is so hard. It's like a rock. I'm going to just, I'm hitting it on the table and you can see how it's just, it's, it's absolutely very, very hard. So just so thankful that we were able to get this out of her. When I look at it this way, it almost looks like a little brain. All right, so some brief points about capsule contracture. Capsule contracture is generally seen um, lifetime risk around eight to twelve percent if they're placed above. Sorry, if they're placed below the muscle, we must always place our um, implants below the muscle. And this lady, we did place it below the muscle. Hers previously was always placed above the muscle. And if you have it placed above the muscle, there's a slight increased risk. Seven, instead of it being from eight to twelve percent, it goes from twelve to eighteen um, percent. Other things that we do. Um, that we know that have been shown to decrease the risk is that when we place implants, we always use generally a Keller funnel when we're doing breast augmentations. Keller funnel decreases the exposure of the implant to the patient's skin and to the outside environment. We always wash and irrigate the pocket that we create very, very well to decrease the risk of any type of biofilm or any type of bacterial um, collection. You can still have a capsular contraction to develop and not really have a true infection, but we think it's something to do with what's called a biofilm. And a biofilm is just kind of what's in and around the skin and getting into the breast capsule. So when you place an implant and it's going into um, it's going into the breast pocket, I mean the breast pocket, it's going into the breast pocket. If there is some natural skin flora or um, any type of you know normal bacteria that's just on our body that somehow gets on that implant, it can cause not necessarily an infection, but it can cause an inflammation in and around the breast pocket, which then leads to the calcification. And that calcification then has different stages. She had stage four, she had the worst stage, but there's normally stage one through four. It generally starts, you start seeing the symptoms if you see it. She started noticing it in actually the first few months, which is very common. The majority of um, women that do get capsular contracture, it is within the first three to six months, but it can be seen generally up to the first two years. After two years, it's pretty rare to get capsular contracture. Um, the normal signs, the normal signs and symptoms after capsular contracture is you might notice some a little bit of firmness and hardening in one of the breast, um, and that sometimes can just be seen without capsular contracture. So it's best to see your surgeon if you're if you're if you're if you're having any of those symptoms. But if you start noticing any firmness. Um, in and around your breast, and especially if it's if it's happening, you know, in the first, like we said, three to six months, like their breasts were totally soft, they start getting firm. Definitely see, you know, your your surgeon about that and get evaluated for it. Treatment and also from a prevention standpoint, we always recommend massage. We give all our patients massage video to um, start doing massage as early as one day out after the surgery. And the idea of the massage is that if there is any type of hardening, fibrosis, calcification that's developing, massage can kind of help smooth that out. The second thing is, is once you start having symptoms, really taking something like Singular. And people that have had previous capsular contracture, I always start them on singular. I don't start all my patients, though, that have never had capsular contracture on singular because, you know, more than 90% of my patients don't get um, capsular contracture. And if I'm starting them all on, an, on a medication, I think that that's just kind of um, really not needed. So what singular is, singular is best known for being used um, in patients that have asthma. It helps decrease the inflammation in around, you know, in the lung tissue or in the, in the bronchioles. Well, uh what they saw was that um, people that were treated for capsular contracture that took this, uh, that took singular, actually had um, improvement of the capsular contracture while taking singular. So we did put her on singular immediately just to make sure that, you know, if she started to develop any symptoms, we, we, we nip it at the bud. Another thing that's been shown is red light therapy. Um, I normally will start people that start having harding on some red light therapy. We have red light therapy here. Um, so if you do have any start to have any harding, we start getting on some red light therapy and get some treatments in, multiple treatments in, generally two to three times a week um, for a first few weeks. So if you develop capsular contracture, do you need to immediately have surgery? The answer is no, because a lot of times capsular contracture will get better on its own. So you start having some initial hardening and some firming, you start doing massage, you take in singular, 
as well as you do some red light therapy, it will really significantly improve um, your symptoms and they can just go away. The, um, the inflammation just basically goes away. But if it gets to the point where you're starting to having pain, um, you start noticing that the, the implant starts having, you know, starts getting contracted and it looks deformed, you definitely need to go see your surgeon and they need to, you know, generally remove the implant, uh, take out the um, capsule that's around the implant that's hard. And then, you know, depending on where it's at and what plane, if it's above the muscle, definitely put it below the muscle. If inside it just looks, there's a lot of inflammation, they might first take out the implants, wait for everything to calm down, and then put new implants in. The majority of our patients that have had capsular contracture actually prefer to have the implants removed and have new implants placed. And it really depends on, the, like I said, the location of where the previous implants were placed above the muscle or below the muscle. And um, in this lady's case, right, they're placed above the muscle, so I can easily take them about above the muscle and put them below the muscle. I'm not a huge fan. If they're underneath the muscle, I'm more of, if it's super calcified, and there's a lot of inflammation in there, then like I said, we want to remove them and then um, let things calm down and then place um, new plants in there once kind of the inflammation and everything's um, subsided. And that's generally waiting a few months. Um, but some people don't want to have um, implants placed. That's that's fine too. We can remove the implants. Oftentimes having implants in place though kind of stretches out your skin. So you might need like a breast lift um, when you have the implants um, removed. So those are your options. If you have any questions, please give us a call. 